Hey YouTube, I'm in the middle of a repair right now and I wanted to show you something as far as buying an MTD mower, what to stay away from. This is the model I would stay away from. Now I'm probably hearing you right now saying, wait a minute, I got one of those or my brother has one of those and he doesn't have any problems with it. Well, good for him because the majority of them have problems. Now, specifically, when you go and look at a mower, this is the stuff that you should look for. The tires being wore and dry rotted, you can see the treads wore down quite a bit. That's not such a big deal, except that should show you the kind of age that it has going on with it. The other thing is quick fixes. Now I've done this in the past myself, but it's best to get the correct new foot pedal if you really want to keep it. Any modifications like this Cyclops deal this guy's got going on. Obviously, those headlights that were in there were never meant to really light anything up. They're just like dome lights that are inside there. So this guy decided to put in a driving light of some kind, and it looks like a halogen. The problem with that is it's a big drain on the battery. Plus, you couldn't possibly engage it through the factory wiring the way it should be. And this guy has been in here jerking around with all the wiring. He's went ahead and put in an aftermarket switch, which would have worked fine for the lights that were in there originally, but probably isn't a good idea for this light. The way this should have been done is thicker cables run from the battery up to a relay and then allow that relay to be engaged with one of these small wires. Instead, he's got small wires running all the way to that light. Not a good idea. That really puts a task on the charging system and causes a problem. Just like on this one, the charging system doesn't work. Now staying on the battery, guess what? He had some kind of a problem with the battery staying charged. So now he's got a full size battery on the back. And the only way that thing stays charged is if you put it on a charger. That's because he burned out the factory alternator that's underneath the flywheel on this thing trying to run that stupid light and now try to charge this big battery. The other thing to look for is something simple as this. I don't know if you can tell, and that right wheel is bent in a little bit. That means there's some support issues with this transmission. And what I mean is, right here, this wheel, instead of being flush, it's a little bit like this. And again, I don't know if you can pick that up so well on this shot that I'm giving you but it's there so there's a problem there also as far as the transaxles I've never really never seen much of a problem other than what you just seen there uh, as long as you keep fluid in them they do pretty good now for the worst part about this thing it's this whole deck engagement deal where you lower it and the blades kick on there are so many things that can go wrong Make sure if you decide to get one of these mowers that the belt guards are on. Those belt guards have to be on for the blades to disengage. Also, but there are blade brakes that are right here that whenever the deck's in the up position, they push on top of the surface of the pulley and that's supposed to help stop the blades from spinning. The problem is with this is there's so many different brackets as you can see underneath here that first of all this deck is really difficult to get on and off and secondly all those points those support points they wear out. You can see there's a lot of movement going on here that shouldn't be and it's a big problem whenever you get the belt engaged it wants to kick off because there's not enough support. Instead of the support, the deck just moves. So when push comes to shove and you get in some real thick grass and the blades are trying to churn and cut through that grass, the deck just shifts forward and the belt slackens up. All right, so I wanted to put a short clip in showing this mower in action. Now this is my neighbor and I'm kind of spying on him here because I didn't want him to feel bad about purchasing this mower. Now this is before he brought it over to me uh, for me to take a look at it. And right now what he's experiencing is the blade stopping when he goes through the grass. Now he lets his grass go a little bit too high before he mows, but this is typical of what it's like in the spring if you uh, are only able to mow maybe once a week. 
and you can see he's got to go really slow. You can also see the stripes that are in the grass where he's already gone over, how the grass didn't even get cut because the blades slowed down. Again, that's because that deck shifts forward and the belt loosens up. Um, it's just not very good the way. You can see he's got to go over the same area, I don't know how many times, for it to mow correctly. It just doesn't want to work. I really hate the fact that he had bought a mower um, that has these problems because he has a hard enough time mowing his yard um, you know, on a regular basis and now he's spending all this time with this mower having to mow over the area two, three, four times. It's just a horrible design and there's a lot of them out there and although the mower may look good there's just a lot of problems that arise from that design. The fact that the deck does not get tensioned far enough back to keep that belt tight to mow the grass is where the problem lies and there's a way to make it to where it does everything the way it's supposed to but it has to be perfect and that's why it's a bad design so I just wanted to show you this short clip of him struggling to get his lawn mowed with this mower and um, I just want to try to make sure that other people avoid this same problem the other thing you want to look for is seats. Now, although this is just a cosmetic thing, these seats are difficult to find in good shape and they're expensive to buy, to replace. They're like 40 to $70 to replace a seat like this. So if you're buying a mower for $200 and you think, oh, I'll just get a new seat, well, you're going to be into like another $70 just for the seat. The thing is, with this, having duct tape, it'll last for a while, but then whenever it gets hot, because you're out mowing in the sun, this stuff starts sticking to your legs, to your backside, whatever, and it all starts pulling off. There was a time that I had duct tape on one of my mowers, and I got up, and along with me, the whole seat came with on my ass. Um, it just ripped off because it was stuck to my pants. As far as this missing the starter cover, no big deal. People take those off and leave them off or forget them. That's not so much an issue. And the engine's pretty decent engine. It's been around for a long time. I don't have any problems with these. The carburetors are easy to work on when you need to. It's a gravity feed system. You gotta watch sometimes the carburetor loses its needle seat seal and it will fill the engine full of gasoline because all that gas just has a tendency to run right down into the block. You can just put a shutoff valve on the uh, fuel line and that'll solve that as long as you remember to shut it off. Look at stuff like the wheels and the tires. Make sure that whenever you go to grab them and you try to move them, that they don't move in and out excessively. If they do, check to see if it's moving on the uh, axle going into the wheel. That could mean bushings are wore in the wheel and tire area. But if it's in and out here, that means that the bushings are wore out in this area and you'd have to replace those. Listen to the muffler. If it seems like it's loud, it could be that there's a baffle broke in there. That's something that you'd have to purchase also. Again, check that wheel too. Check all the knobs. Make sure that they're working. Everything works. Again, with the rear tires, you can see here that these are hard. I mean, they're very hard. This rubber's not pliable at all. So that means there's a lot of years going on there. And make sure everything's hooked up the way it's supposed to be. Well, I hope that helps you whenever you're looking at mowers, what to look for. This is just one mower that if I was looking at it, I would pass on it easily just because of the overall design. But if somebody was wanting to sell it for maybe $50, the engine's worth that. And if I go ahead and do all the work to make all the bracketry underneath the deck perfect and make sure everything's in place, I can make it work like it was new originally, but that's a lot of time on my part. Once all that stuff's done, I might be able to make a little money on it, but overall, I'd just pass on this mower unless I needed some parts off of it. Well, that's my two cents, and if you have any comments or any questions, just go ahead and send them to me. If you uh, like this video, click subscribe, and I'll try to get more on like it. Thanks.